It's that time of year. Time for spooks, scares, and oh yes, treats. It's Halloween time, and what better way to get into that mood than video games, right? There's always certain games for me that I always seem to come back to around this time of year or so that I try to get a play in or a playthrough of. So today I have 10 games to talk about that always help me get into that Halloween mood. This is not necessarily a top 10 list, so these games are in no particular order. Of course I could probably go and add like 20 more games to this list, but for YouTube's sake and your time, I'll keep this one to 10. There's a few obvious choices in here as well as some deep cuts. Some games have those scares and some games are just full of that Halloween flavor. And remember, it's my list, so of course there's going to be differences from games you would pick. With that said, let the spooks begin. Also stay tuned to the end of the video, because I'm going to have an announcement on a new giveaway for us reaching over 100 subscribers for the channel. So you definitely want to stay tuned and you don't want to miss that. First up is Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is a game that's quite possibly one of the best PlayStation games. Luckily over the years, this game has been ported to almost everything under the sun, except Nintendo Switch, come on Konami. But I've had a lot of fun with this game, and every year I always seem to try to get a playthrough of this one. For those that don't know, this is one of the first games in that Metrovania style for Castlevania games. And it just has an addictive gameplay, it's just fun to go through, fun to level up, gain abilities, get those secrets, the graphics look good. I know that in the States we didn't get a lot of 2D games, but the PlayStation could do some really good 2D stuff, and Castlevania Symphony of the Night really shows that off. The music is just amazing. If you've never played Castlevania Symphony of the Night before, you owe yourself to play this game. As I mentioned before, it's just available for just about everything. You can download it as a PlayStation Classic on PlayStation 3. It's been re-released, I believe, on the Xbox 360. It's also been released on this new collection that has Rondo of Blood as well as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And it's also available on mobile, so there's a lot of places to play this game. If you like Ghostbusters, Luigi's Mansion will do you no wrong. Though, to be honest, you could fit any of the Luigi's Mansion's games in here, whether it's two or three from the Switch. I'm gonna go with the original because that's the one that started it all, and I have a lot of more memories with that one. It was one of the first GameCube games I ever played, and I had a lot of fun with it. I was initially thrown off the fact that we didn't have a traditional Mario game on the GameCube way back in the day, but Luigi's Mansion stands up, there's a lot of fun capturing the ghosts and going through the mansion here. The 3DS version is a bit better. For some reason I like it a lot more on the 3DS. But either or can do you no wrong here. And even though Luigi's exploring a spooky mansion, there's still a lot of family friendly Nintendo fun to be had here. It's a great game. And like I said, if you want to, check out the later releases. Check out 2, check out 3. They're good stuff as well. One of my favorite games that was released five years ago for the PlayStation 4 was Until Dawn. It's a survival horror game that features a little bit more interactivity and a lot of replayability based on who survives and who doesn't. The game has a huge effect based on what actions you take and there's just a lot of cool stuff that goes on. If you're a fan of like classic 80s horror, you'll feel right at home here. Though the game is arguably a lot stronger in the first half than the second half. I've had a lot of fun playing this game. I've actually played through a number of times from beginning to end. I've played it on the stream before, actually twice, and a lot of people have fun interacting with it. It's also a great game to play with other people because together as a group you can decide as you know choices of who lives, who dies, what you do, what the character does. So again, a lot of replayability with this game. If you haven't played Until Dawn, check it out on PlayStation 4. It's super cheap to get a hold of and definitely worth your time. Now here's one of those deep cuts for the episode here. And this is Monster Party for the NES. This is a game that not many really know about, but it's an awesome game. It was made by Human Entertainment and it was published here by Bandai. It was actually only released in the North America. There was a Famicom version planned, but that never came into fruition, though a prototype was found years later. The game centers on a child named Mark. He was on his way home from a baseball game, and he's approached by an alien 
griffin hybrid named Bert. Yes, named Bert. He seeks assistance in ridding evil monsters from his realm. So, Bert <laughs> and Mark travel to, to his realm there, the Dark World. And on the way there, Mark basically goes through and battles all these monsters and, and whatnot. They are... They are parodies based on classic monster movies, so you got a little bit of everything. You got the Wolfman, you got Medusa, you got Dracula, you got Loch Ness monsters even in here. There's a lot of different things. One of the nice little abilities with this is the fact that you can actually merge with Bert and use his powers so you can fly through and fire, uh, fire shots and stuff like that. A good aspect of the game is using your baseball bat, which is... As Bert says, a weapon. <laughs> and you go through and you try to attack these enemies and get through. And there's a lot of little fun bosses in here. There's a lot of just wacky stuff. At some point, you just go ahead and you start fighting onion rings and and food and just crazy stuff. Like a mummy that's like, I can't feel his legs. It, it's a funny game. It's definitely a deep cut. If you've never played it before, it's worth trying to track down and play. It's an awesome NES game, and definitely one that gets you into the Halloween mood. Okay, this is the one that's probably going to get me a little flack here. I know, I know, I know. Resident Evil 5 isn't loved by everyone here. But for some reason, that is that is one I just get into every year. And it's one game that you can definitely play with a friend. Yes, most of the other Resident Evil games are single player experiences. But for some reason, Resident Evil 5 is one of my favorite co-op games in the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era. And the game's been re-released so many times that I've, I've literally lost count here. It's just one of those games where you can grab a buddy, go through as either Chris or Shiva. You know, there's a lot of fun here. There's a lot of definitely good replayability with this game. It is a bit of a different Resident Evil experience. Again, more action-oriented. But it's a game that I just have so many memories of and so many hours I've poured into this game. I lost track on how many hours I poured into this game with my friends on the Xbox 360. If you've never played Resident Evil 5 before or maybe you, you know, you're a Resident Evil fan and you just kind of stayed away because it was more action oriented, grab a buddy. This, is, this game's a lot of fun. It's a bit different so go in with a little bit different expectations but it, there's few horror related co-op games that are this much fun. So I know for the PlayStation, the good old PlayStation 1, that a lot of people relegate towards Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, and of course Silent Hill for their survival horror fixes. But for me, Dino Crisis was THE fix. This is a game back in the day that I actually used to be able to speedrun. I used to be able to go through the game really, really fast, be able to just go through and just methodically take out the dinosaurs and go through the game and hardly ever get hit. Though I still remember my first playthrough going through with the dinosaurs getting spooked, that thrilling fights with the T-Rex. There was a lot of good moments for it. It essentially was Jurassic Park meets Resident Evil. It's good stuff. Now I know Capcom has remade Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, but they really need to get around and remake Dino Crisis. It would be amazing to have that on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. Make it happen, Capcom. But if you can somehow get a hold of playing it and not like pay an arm and a leg for it, it's definitely a lot of fun. And it's a must have for a Godzilla fan or, or any fan of classic giant monster movies. Costume Quest by Double Fun is just this fun game and it's based on trick or treating. It takes the whole aspect of Halloween for kids, trick or treating, and turns into a video game. It's an RPG in the style of like a JRPG. And it's actually a really, really fun game. When I first played it on the 360 years ago, I was blown away by how much it just takes that aspect of Halloween. I mean, it is truly a Halloween game. And it just works, it just works. It's just, it's a fun experience. It's not a very long experience. And to be honest, for a seasonal game, and I consider Costume Quest to be a seasonal game, it works for that. You can literally boot it up on Halloween or the day before Halloween and play through and sit through and beat the game. What's really awesome too is as you play through the game, you unlock costumes that will give you special abilities that you can use in battle. 
I mean, if you're a fan of JRPGs and just looking for something a little spin on things, it definitely is a game worth checking out. Every year this is one of those games I always try to get a playthrough of just because it's just easy to go through a day and knock it out. And it's a fun experience. It's like a favorite Halloween movie that you just gotta watch every year around this time of year. Okay, okay, it might feel like a double dip, but trust me, I consider Super Castlevania 4 to be different from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Just because, as far as classic Castlevania goes, I think Super Castlevania 4 is the, the best of the classic Castlevania style. Whereas Symphony of the Night is more of the Metrovania, start, was actually the first of the Metrovania games for Castlevania. Super Castlevania 4 is just a solid platformer with nice action and some really, really impressive stages, as well as some really, really good music. You go through, and it's, the goal is simple. You go through to whip some enemies, you can whip in all directions there, and survive while you take down monsters and eventually Dracula himself. It's a solid game. If you've never played Super Castlevania 4, you need to remedy that. Not much things get sweeter for the Super Nintendo than Castlevania 4. I know for some people watching this, there's going to be some difference of opinions with this next game here. The last game I have on the list. But for me, the best survival horror game of all time is Silent Hill 2. It is an amazing game that really, really messes with you. It is just a really spooky game for the PlayStation 2, and that's the version I would recommend. The HD version has some issues that was released some years ago that they never addressed. But for Silent Hill 2 for the PlayStation 2, it was just a game that stuck with me. There's great story, great setting, great just design of the game, such care in that game. And when I think of survival horror game, I think of games like this where they're not action oriented, where it's more or less you're legitimately trying to survive this game. This game wants to eat you up, the world in this game wants to tear you apart, mess with your head, stomp on you, put you in the grave, and then pull you back out and do the same thing over again. It's a classic that, as far as survival horror games have gone, very few have been able to even touch. So, every year, it's a game that Honestly, this is a weird one for me. It's not necessarily a game that I go actively playing every year. It's a game I usually try to track down somebody who's playing it for the first time. Because seeing their experience through it, and seeing them go like, Oh my god, what the heck is going on? And just having the game mess with them, it's a beautiful thing. So, so this is a survival horror game that I more or less try to track down people watching every year. Not necessarily play anymore, because I've played it, I've gone through it a few times. This is a game that definitely for new experience, for people who are having new experiences with it, have not, you know, that's the exciting thing. If you've never played Silent Hill 2 before, and you're into survival horror, and you're not afraid to get spooked or scared, definitely gotta give it a playthrough. So there you go. Pretty eclectic list there. You have a mixture of games, you have newer games, you have older games, some scary, some not scary, some solo experiences, some multiplayer experiences, definitely all over the place there. But these games generally, when I think of Halloween, these are the games I come back to that I like to experience around this time of year. And that might be different from your list. What games do you play or come back to around this time of year to get into that Halloween mood? Let me know in the comments below. I really want to hear your thoughts on that. I'm definitely curious. I also want to take this moment to thank you guys for everyone who's been watching my videos and the 100 plus subscribers that we have for the YouTube channel. In honor of that, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm giving away a $20 gift card to either the Nintendo eShop, PlayStation Store, Xbox, or Steam to one lucky winner they get to decide which gift card they want it for. And the link to that is on the screen right now. So you log in through that. I'm also going to put this in the description box as well. There's a number of ways to enter in. And the giveaway should end on November 1st. So good luck to everyone. Hopefully you'll be the lucky winner. But that's all I have for today. If you liked the video, 
consider subscribing. I do two videos a week. It's mostly Nintendo stuff, but sometimes I branch out and stuff like this video. Also, check out the Kaiju Club Discord. The link to that in the description box below, as well as my Twitch channel. I stream four days a week. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you later, and I'll catch you next time.